Tesla seems to be moving in on that, that they're, um, you know, basically trying to put Ethernet back on track to be as fast, if not faster, than all of this InfiniBand hardware that is one of the major bottlenecks that um, NVIDIA superclusters really have to face. I thought it was cool to see like people doing it. I, I, I did see also that Gregor Chuck went to his service center and had them force the update. So that's one option if anybody is willing to not be patient enough to wait. I don't know. I'm I'm pretty patient. I'm just going to wait for the update to come naturally. But I think it's pretty cool. Like, uh, I mean, uh, I think it was Ashok who, who said it, that they were going to do the park assist first before they implemented the uh, FSD because, you know, just so they could see how things were working with, the, I guess it's the camera setup probably and things like that that they were worried about. I don't really know how, why it's so different, but also I did notice that uh, Meet Kevin spoke about this and he had this whole diatribe about, oh, if they can't get this fixed on this, then what makes you think they're going to get a third party? Uh, <laughs> so it's just like the most ridiculous leaps of, the, the, I mean, the gymnastics, the lyrical gymnastics that people make to like come up with these wild solutions as to why Tesla can't do something when, Clearly, they're doing it is just pretty fantastical to me. But yeah, I, I think this is awesome. I, I think Parksys is going to be amazing, especially since we don't have any of the uh, the sensor suite yeah. on on the vehicle. So I was always curious how this is going to work, anyways. So I'm I'm pretty excited. I I would add to that though. It is a reasonable question to raise if it takes. 9, 10, 12 months to get FSD ported. We saw how effortless it was to get it from S to X to 3 to Y, and we just assumed it was easy. Uh, my only hope is that uh, maybe it's because of the rear steering that's adding spatial complexity. And if that's the case, it would make sense, and then they would be back to doing it very easily on other vehicles. We also saw the semi out last week uh, with LiDAR on it presumably for ground truth uh, data collection. So maybe it's not as easy as just having a 3D impression of the world stitched together. Maybe there is some added complexity we don't understand. Uh, so I don't know. Well, I definitely think that um, the steer by wire aspect of it, regardless of whether it has front steering or not, is part of the complexity uh, that's involved there. And then... Um, yeah, there, there's definitely a, a whole new set of basically technical challenges with a platform like the Cybertruck where they have, you know, basically radically new architecture in a lot of ways. So yeah, I agree though, hopefully that once they solve the Cybertruck, then the port to whatever these next generation style vehicles are, uh, will be much faster, simpler, and easier. And it's kind of like the same deal with their the introduction of doing these full end-to-end -end neural networks has introduced a whole new, you know, realm of complexities in rolling out from 12.3 to 12.4 to 12.5. These things are taking a little bit longer than we had hoped. Um, I think that something similar with the new vehicle architecture that, yeah, once you get into the details, it's it's not quite as straightforward. Um, but once we have a good, robust process for solving it, then we can speed back up again. I think what you're saying is that not so much the steer by wire, because when, when, when it's driving, it's definitely doing that, but you mean the variable steering. Yeah. That could in introduce a whole, a whole lot of new complexity that it needs to learn to understand. So I think that's a, a very solid point. Hans, thank you. Yeah. Go ahead, Joe. I was going to say the front camera too, probably because that's a new placement for the, for all the input. Yeah, I was going to say, um, you know, I, I think uh, one, so a couple things like the autopilot team is a lot smaller than everyone thinks, right? You know, you don't have these insane, this insane team of like hundreds of, if not a couple thousand engineers, I think it's what, 120, maybe like 200, whatever the number is. Um, but they don't have a, an insane, or the, the team is not big for, for autopilot. So I think that that's something. So I don't know how they're divvying up, like out of how many of those engineers are focused specifically on the Cybertruck. Um, but you all called out, you know, things that are going to be new variables uh, to the truck, which are going to be the steer by wire, the four wheel steering, the front camera, 
um, and the size of the vehicle. Um, obviously, um, those will all kind of add various dynamics. Uh, there was things I remember even back when FSD uh, beta was rolling out. There was it got it did get to a certain point where, <clears throat> and again, it's a different system now because it's the neural network and and whatnot. Um, but they, you know, sometimes the my ex would have a slower rollout on some of the updates just because of the size um, dealt a little bit with it um, as far as like how they would roll roll it out. Like, you know, so I just think that they they're prioritizing and obviously we can get we'll get into like the whole hardware three and FSD uh, pretty soon. But um, I'm I'm personally really looking forward to this. I mean, I think the probably my most negative feedback on the Cybertruck is the fact that you're driving like this crown vic size tr car and you you know you, you you i have to turn on like when i'm gonna like park in a spot if um my front camera it doesn't turn up typically so i have to turn it on make sure i'm getting close and then i use my side mirrors to be basically you know size like how close i am if i'm parked the right way just because um so this hopefully with the park assist and you know ultimately just being able to size like how close are things the range is going to be it's really important for this truck uh especially given its size that's just my opinion well All right. and as as they ramp up shipment as we've seen with the photos of how many trucks are about to enter the world you're gonna you're definitely gonna need more more of assist features these are people that like me, I never owned a truck before. You know what I mean? Like, like there's a yeah. lot of new owners that are going to be having this big vehicle to manage without any assistance. So it's going to be, I mean, we're just in that day and age, like cell phone drives. Like, how could you not have a vehicle with that? So I think that's what's going to, I was looking at that, that lot and looking at all those people that are kind of all those new cyber truck owners. And I'm thinking, holy cow. So uh, one other thing, you know, we all know that Tesla is a car company. So, Elon really quick. Probably nothing. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> looks like looks like a bathroom. Um, and definitely a Bucky's bathroom. <laughs> yeah, it is very clean. <laughs> so, you know, Elon, um, you know, his caption was the video inside of the cortex today, the giant new AI training supercluster being built at the Tesla headquarters in Austin to solve real world AI. Um, so what did you guys think of that video? Um, you know, like, what what comes to mind uh, when you saw kind of um, that video and just where Tesla's headed? I mean, I remember seeing that thing and they were literally trying to build like the building part of it. And then next thing you know, he shows a video of like the inside. So, so within months, yeah. Skynet. So, so the building is not is not finished, but this part of it is. And that's something we see kind of uniquely with Tesla is they don't wait for the building to be finished to get the work underway inside. Uh, it was pointed out by fred that according to sources this isn't even using liquid cooling yet and it's like well is your sources your ears because my gosh uh or is your source anyone who's ever worked in a data center because come on uh if you look at the drone footage outside you can see that the cooling system is not complete yet but they're already using it and so they're um i assume at this point configuring and getting it dialed in i don't know what it's actually doing do we know if it's actually solving problems or if it's just configuring i imagine it's still in the in the configuration process because i imagine it's a complicated uh bit of math to crunch and that it takes a little while to get it set up so it'll be very interesting to see i imagine that is a pretty warm room at this time yeah, I, I know that Hans is probably going to go into the weeds on this pretty soon, but I just thought from a layman's perspective, like what you were saying, yeah, it's got to be a hot place, but but holy cow, like Elon's been saying for a long time that this isn't just a plug and play solution. You can't just take these and just, you know what I mean? And then it works and, and then you're off to the races and you're good to go. So seeing the complexity and yeah, he had put out that video and then a few days later you get like the like a little bit of the sauce behind what's actually happening with the, with the TT, uh, OP 
E and all that. It's like, it's like, holy cow, man. They, they made their own freaking, <laughs> their own transfer system to, for data. Like they invented a new way to get to faster data because of the computes that they have. I mean, it's what Tesla is doing is staggering, man. It's incredible. And that and they just don't get enough credit on on these little details and things like that. It's pretty insane. Well, they patented it, I think, and then they have given it now to the uh basically the foundation that owns Ethernet. Um so one I would make on this is that now we've seen Elon multiple times recently, basically elbows deep in the construction of data centers, both at XAI and now at Tesla. And one of the things I said when he did it at you know XAI is that this is going to help the construction at Tesla. The fact that they're building you know this one in Tennessee, like there's learnings that are going to occur from that, and those learnings can then be transferred back to Tesla as they build theirs. Um, and I'm relatively confident that something along those lines has happened. The the TTPOE thing was cool, Joe. And, um, you know, basically the, the short version of it is that TCP IP is the transport protocol that the entire internet operates on. And one of the things with the internet is that, you know, if you're transferring data over long distances and poor connections, you need to have a built-in mechanism that can deal with the fact that, okay, sometimes data transfer is really, really slow. And in these high bandwidth um, supercomputer applications, that's not a an edge case that you're having to deal with. And so they were basically able to, through vertical integration, look at the entire stack a CPIP and build it back up and eliminate a number of steps from the process and move some things that are normally handled in software into hardware and implement these custom pieces of TTPOE hardware in their chips that sped up this data transfer process by a dramatic amount. And um, one of my favorite people to listen to on a lot of these technical chip-related items is um wow i just blanked out on his name um, Keller? well he did it yeah. yes jim keller thank you sorry so jim keller one of the things that he has pointed out is that over time all of these um custom siloed network protocols like nvidia is pursuing right now with infiniband they always lose to ethernet that over the long arc of history ethernet always wins and tesla seems to be moving in on that that they're um, you know, basically trying to put Ethernet back on track to be as fast, if not faster, than all of this InfiniBand hardware that is one of the major bottlenecks that um, NVIDIA superclusters really have to face. And um, now that TTPOE is something that we know is implemented on Dojo. I don't know if, honestly, what the um, this supercomputer cluster that they're uh, implementing a Tesla or the one at XAI. I don't know if those involve that style of networking or if since they're mostly NVIDIA chips, if they really are um, just going with InfiniBand and the, the standard uh, networking solution that NVIDIA provides. So leave that uh, you know open for discussion uh, for people. But it is a technology that they're moving forward with aggressively. We do know that that Dojo cluster is now operational, at least at some level, in uh, New York. And so they're continuing to drive this parallel process of developing not only chips, but basically the full stack of hardware and software necessary to operate a an AI powerhouse supercomputer <laughs> um, that could be completely independent of NVIDIA um, and that just could use to drive pressure back on on Jensen to stay up, you know, compete. Let's let's stay up to date. And uh, and Jensen, to his credit, has done a phenomenal job of outpacing, for the most part, uh, Elon and Tesla's efforts on this front. But that may not always be the case. 